I understand it, at the beginning that uh, your character wasn't even in the script. In the script, right. Yeah, I called Oliver and I said that my mother had known JFK and Jackie and um, she was fashion editor of life at the time and kept putting Jackie O on the cover as a fashion icon and um, that I had to be in the movie. And he said, uh, well, there was no part. Um, everything was cast. And uh, and I said, but you're Oliver Stone. You'll think of something and he said, well, okay, give me a few days. And he called me back and he said something like, there were five women who were um, assassinated because they knew too much about, um, you know, the the um, intent to kill Kennedy. And um, would I be willing to come in and improvise all of them? And um, I said, sure. And I believe the... Uh, the ones I remember was that there was a doctor, so I, I had on like a white suit, and uh, Dorothy Kilgallen, the talk show host, and um, Irv Kupsinet, Chicago talk show host, his daughter, and Rose Sharami. And um, so I knew that she was somewhat of a, a hooker, drug runner, um, stripper, so I had on a stripper outfit underneath my suit, and I came in and I I did whatever he told me to do, starting off with the doctor and Dorothy Kilgallen. And by the time I took my clothes off and I had on my stripper outfit, I was Roche Rami. He told me I was on heroin withdrawal and that I was hysterical because of what I knew, and so I started screaming and the tears started streaming down my face, and he said. Uh, God, I've never seen anyone do that so fast. And I said, well, I've been studying with Lee Strasberg 25 years, and that's what I do. So he hired me on the spot, and um, he began to have his people send me. But back then, there was no email, so there were fax machines. So every day, I got more and more and more faxes on Roshirami and Jack Ruby, all this background. And... uh and then he made us uh, sign um, something, a writer in the contract that we wouldn't talk about it. We wouldn't talk about JFK at all uh, until after the film was out mm. because he was having death threats and whatnot. Um, Which is amazing. I mean, this, this movie was persecuted before it even started shooting in a way that I, I've never seen before. But were you So you were aware of the of the kind of the fury in the media about this film when you became yeah. involved. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So um, tell me tell me what you discovered about about Rose that that was mo- of of greatest interest to you. Well, she was a single mom and she had a son named Michael. Um and she was just trying to survive and uh she um did all these things, drug running and and strip dancing and I guess being a call girl and um, working for him however he wanted her to. I'm reading a book now. I don't know if you know about it, but I just started it called Rose by Many Other Names, Rose Sharami of the JFK Assassination by Todd Elliott. Oh, wow. Yeah, so there is a book out on her. But since I just began, I can't tell you too much. Um, I did see her mugshot, and there's a there's a, a few words that says her ten year old son Michael said that there was nothing behind her eyes. I had I, I remember I was in makeup and I had them doing heroin marks up and down my arm, being a method actor, and I suddenly got a someone put a phone uh, a telephone next to my ear, and it was Oliver who said We're all ready. Are you ready? <laughs> and so. Very abruptly, in the middle of getting my heroin makeup, um, I split, you know, and got in a car and drove to where he was. He shot it in 8, 16, and 35 color in black and white all at once. Mm. And he wanted a stunt woman to uh, fall out of the car, and I said, no, I wanted to fall out of the car. And I remember my leg was bleeding, but I felt so authentic. <laughs> Yeah. Um, 
And, well, um, that's just it. There, there is such what's remarkable about your performance in the movie. Well, a couple of things. There is such a level of, uh, of I don't know what word to use. Anxiety is too light a word, but you're automatically in that state. And you alluded to it earlier. That kind of performance comes naturally to you. You, you or do you have to work up to that level? No, I mean, we shot this when, in 19... When did we shoot this, 1990, 19... 91, it would be, probably 91. 91, yeah. So I started training with the Actors Studio in 1964, so that's a lot of years of training how to um, get your rage out and your tears out and your... um, I'm actually a method acting teacher... And uh, so those kind of roles come easy. I don't know if you saw my film Anna that I got nominated for. Absolutely, yes, ma'am. So, so that was similar. You know, there was very little time to shoot, and there was a lot of emotional range. And and that's kind of my forte. I think I do that better than anything. It, it was it was amazing working with Oliver. He's very intense, as you can imagine. And but he wanted to know. Like the scene when when I come into the hospital room, he wanted to know how I wanted to shoot it to to achieve that end. And I said, can we shoot the rehearsal? And he said, sure. And I said, can you not tell your crew that you're going to have me wheel down the hall of the hospital and into the room? Can, Can it be a surprise? Can I just be hysterical and you're shooting and no one knows what's going on? And he said, sure. And so... Um, the actors playing the newsman and the doctor in the room when I got wheeled in and I was screaming and whatnot, they, they had no idea. They they probably thought it was rehearsal, but it was we did it in one take, and that's how we did it. <laughs> wow, wow. Um, so you were another thing that amazes me about your section of the film, and it it, it really kicks off the narrative. I mean, it, it gets right there at the very beginning. Um, so I, w- I would imagine you Do you know were... that Newsweek magazine, the very opening line of their review said the uh, most authentic moment in the movie was Rose Sharani. Wow. wow. That's nice, huh? It's very nice. But it sets, it sets up a very uh, ominous, uh, urgent tone in the film, your performance. It just gives so much to it. Were you... I'm sure you're aware of the of the scope of the film that you were involved in? Um, or, or, yes, or was it the, yes. Yeah. We all were. And like I said, we, we didn't talk about it. It was like a secret conspiracy of our own. Um, but uh, I remember, because I was a stripper, I asked him if if Oliver and Kevin and I could go to a place that Jack Ruby ran um, if it wasn't the place, it was one of the places or what, and I don't remember the name of it now. But um, so we went to the strip club, and I uh, I went upstairs and talked to the strippers, and I asked them if they minded if I stripped. Um, and they were kind of um, surprised, and they said, well, ordinarily they would, but you had to belong to the union. Hmm. Um so it was illegal to have anyone come in there and, you know, that wasn't one of their strippers. But um, I was totally into it. I was going to do Rosh Um And I remember Oliver and Kevin, they had a good time with all the dancers circling around the table and um, falling all over them, you know. Yeah. Actually, you you had worked with Costner before, hadn't you? Yeah, and revenge. Yeah, he 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 had something to do with my getting the part. I mean, Oliver was was thinking about it and open to it, but you know, really not knowing how to fit me in. And I sent flowers to both of them, and I think Kevin put in a word. Um, I knew Kevin from way before he was a star. He was a stage manager at the Raleigh Studios when. Um, Neil Young directed me in a movie 
and now I can't think of the name of it, with me and Dennis Hopper and Dean Stockwell and Human mm. Highway, it was called. And so when I when I met Kevin for Revenge, I said, oh, my God, I loved you in No Way Out, and I loved you in Field of Dreams, and I loved you in this. And, this. and he said, Sally, don't you remember me? And I said, well, you're Kevin Costner. He said, no, I was the stage manager at the Raleigh Studios. when You were, you, you, you were one of the people that taught me how to act. But, I mean, he was just very gr- gracious. Um, so, yeah, he he helped me get into JFK. Mm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I remember when it showed at the Academy and that beginning of the film happened, um, there was this gasp from everybody in the audience. It, it was very memorable in my in my life um, of of how that affected the audience. Yeah, were you were you surprised by the finished film when you when you did see it? Oh, I thought it was great. Um, <coughs> um, no, I wasn't surprised. You know, I think Oliver does Oliver, you know. So I um, want to ask you, before I let you go, I want to ask you about what what you've been on the festival circuit with. Is is it is it Posey? Oh, it's, is it, you know, it, it's interesting. It's a 22-minute film, but everybody um, is blown away by it. It's uh, called Posey, and she has Alzheimer's, and... Um, she runs away from the assisted living place that her granddaughter is trying to force her to stay at, and she ends up on a beach and falls asleep and dreams that she's the queen of a Bolly, uh, the star of a Bollywood film, and all of the people that she hated in assisted living are the stars of the Bollywood film, and they're all dancing with her. And we had 50 Bollywood dancers, and um, I, I chant Sanskrit. Uh, I used to be a professional yoga teacher, and uh, so I chant Sanskrit in the film, and uh, by the end of the film, I've made peace with living in assisted living, but so many people have had relatives with Alzheimer's that they come up to me and tears streaming down their face, and they hug me, and, um, you know, it, it's had a profound effect on people, so I guess I've... I've I don't know. I've won about six awards by now wow. uh, for this particular portrayal. I, it's being a, Billy Demoto, the filmmaker, is writing a feature now. Oh wow, that would be great. Yeah. You, you know, and you're. I mean, this this work <clears throat> in Posey, you're being recognized for, and you're still so vital in the world of acting. You've been doing it for a long, long time. You've fifty-three years. <laughs> that yeah. You've worked with the best, and you've studied under the best, and you've taught, uh, you know, acting as well to some of our best. So yeah. I'm curious to know, at this stage of your acting life, do you still, the reason why you're doing it and the pleasure you get from it, is it different at all from when you started? No, no, it's the same. It's my life. um I started making money when I was 17, and uh, I've never had to go outside show business to make a living. Um, and um, I'm getting ready to shoot something about what what's it called? Um, what do you want for Christmas? It's a Disney Christmas film where I play um, Shannon Dougherty's mother and Dean Kane's mother-in-law, and um, the work goes on. Um, I I can't see myself doing anything else, and I see myself living to be Grandma Moses's age and acting away. 